Welcome to Kingdom Matters with Apostle Gideon. If you are new on this channel, kindly consider subscribing as well as turning on the bell for notification. We upload weekly videos aimed at helping you grow in the Lord and also answer difficult questions that people have on Christianity. Now, this is my second video on the topic why Christians should not practice biblical astrology or whatever astrology. In this video, we are going to show verses that forbid straight astrology and explain them in their proper context. In my first video, I made a number of points why no Christian should indulge in astrology or the reading of their horoscopes. I said these things. Number one, neither Jesus nor the early apostles practiced astrology or the reading of the horoscopes. So no Christian should indulge in it. Number two, astrology was the way of the hidden people. While the Holy Spirit is leading the people of God was the way of the people of God. So, if you want to work as people of God, then we should rely on the Holy Spirit, not on astrology. And always, the astrologers contested the people of God, and the people of God always won. So, no need to reject your gold for a stone. Number three, if the Holy Spirit is not enough guidance for everything that we do in the Christian journey, so that we need to rely on astrology, then the word and the character of God is in doubt. I will be taking this point a notch deeper in this video as I explain why the Holy Spirit is enough. Number four, Christianity is a call for fellowship to intimately relate with God. So to look to the creation while the way to the creator himself has been opened to us. It's not just being foolish in quote, but a lack of faith in the Lord. And number five, we said astrology is about us, but Christianity is about Christ. No one does astrology to know Jesus. That's why even unbelievers safely practice various kinds of astrology. But Christianity is not about us. It is more about Jesus Christ. It's about we going to Jesus Christ. I will leave the link to the first video in the description. You can check it out after watching this video. It is going to bless you. Today, I want to answer a few questions raised by some of the people who watched the video and thought to ask. Before I go into answering it, the reason we are addressing this issue of biblical astrology is because the pastor said the Holy Ghost is not enough for every aspect of the Christian's life. And that is an essential doctrine which must be addressed. We can disagree on many things like the order of service, the qualification of a pastor, baptism, and many things, but not things that have to do with the Godhead and the Word of God. The moment you touch the Godhead and try to mess up with the attributes of the Godhead, then you are messing with the whole gospel and it must be addressed immediately. Let's watch what he said. Mm -hmm. So there are most people, they seem to say that, no, you see, God gave us the Bible. That, that is sheer ignorance. God gave us the Bible. God has given us the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is enough. You are listening to a people who want to keep you down. Now the question is this. If Holy Spirit is enough, what of the Father and what of Jesus? Holy Spirit cannot be enough. Holy Spirit is there to teach you. So what exactly would he teach you? He's there to instruct you. He's there to have a material to open your hearts to. He's not the only thing you're supposed to have. He's not the only being you're supposed to work with. You're supposed to know Jesus. Yes. You're supposed to know the Father. Yes. You're supposed to know Holy Spirit. Yes. You're supposed to know the Scriptures. Yes. You are supposed to know the brethren. Yes. You are supposed to know the stars. Yes. Everything is all inclusive. Let us not take one and leave the other. It was in his quest to teach biblical astrology that he made the claim that the Holy Spirit is not enough for every aspect of the Christian journey. So I asked, what purpose does the astronomy serve that the Holy Spirit and the power of God in a believer hasn't and can't serve? What benefit does it bring to anybody that the Holy Spirit in us cannot give us? Astrology is basically knowing ourselves and by the arrangement of the sun, moon, and stars, be able to foretell the future. When you read the Bible, all these things have been done by the Holy Spirit through people. The Holy Spirit has helped people to know the true nature of people and to be able to tell the future. For example, Elisha in the Old Testament knew Hazael or Hazel who would become king in Israel. He knew who he was even when the person could not tell 
what he was going to become. Second Kings 8, 10 to 13 says, he knew he would become king and do terrible things to the people of God. Number two, when Jesus met Nathaniel in John 1, 47 to 40, he knew who he was by the spirit. Jesus said, here comes an honest man, a true son of Israel. How do you know what I am like? Nathaniel demanded. The Holy Spirit reveals things to the people of God present and future the holy spirit also reveals times and events to his people example he revealed the number of people looking for peter to him and the moment they got to the gate of the house where he was lodging the spirit of god prompted him that the people have arrived that is what the holy spirit can do that is not just peter ananias who was a disciple of the church got a revelation about the conversion of Paul, who he had only heard of Paul, but he got a revelation of the conversion of Paul, where Paul was staying and what Paul was doing at the moment of his vision. Nothing can give such details but the Spirit of God. Now, if this is what astrology seeks to achieve, can't the Spirit lead the people of God to know these things? If it is possible, then the teaching of horoscopes to the children of God is not necessary, even if there were no scriptures speaking against them yes now let's look at the verses that shows god forbids us from practicing astrology jeremiah chapter 10 verse 1 to 2 from the kjv says hear ye the word which the lord speaketh unto you o house of israel that saith the lord learn not the way of the hidden and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven for the hidden are dismayed at them the question is, what is the way of the hidden? It is astrology and idolatry. We can see this in verse 2 to 5 of Jeremiah chapter 10. But as you can see, they leave out, do not learn the way of the hidden and only talk about being dismayed by the signs of heaven. They quickly jump to explain it away that um, when the hidden see the signs of heaven, they are dismayed. But when the people of God see it, they look up to God. They should look up to God and shouldn't be dismayed. That is not what he was talking about. Don't learn the way of the hidden means. Don't practice astrology as the hidden do. And don't be afraid of the signs of heaven may be. Don't be afraid of what the signs of heaven may be because... You have a God who made all things. And that is what Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 11 says, contextually. So don't be afraid of the signs of heaven and don't practice astrology. If you follow the pastor, you know by now that in places where the verse is not clear, like this one, he will use other versions to make it clearer. But quickly, he scans through to the next text, used against astrology without letting us know what it means to learn the way of the hidden. Let's get the verses in different versions and hear it for yourself. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2 to 4. We are going to take it from the Living Bible. Now, open your ears and listen carefully. It says, don't act like the people who make horoscopes and try to read their faith and future in the stars. Not equivocal. Don't be frightened by predictions such as this, for it is all a pack of lies. Their ways are futile and foolish. They cut down a tree and carve an idol. Verse 4, they decorate it with gold and silver and fasten it accurately in place with hammer and nails so that it won't fall over. What do you see here? Is it just about not fearing the signs of heaven? Or does it include not practicing astrology as the hidden do? This is what they don't want the members to know. So they jump it and go and talk about do not be dismayed by the signs of heaven. See it in a New Living Translation. It says, this is what the Lord says. Do not act like the other nations who try to read their future in the stars. Are you watching? Do not be afraid of their predictions, even though other nations are terrified by them. Do you see? So if you don't care about reading your future in the stars, then you wouldn't even be bothered by the signs, whatever the signs are. You are not bothered because you serve a living God. This is unequivocal. Why is it that it is being shifted to just do not be dismayed by the signs of heaven? No. If you don't learn their ways to practice astrology, you wouldn't even be terrified by the signs in the face because you wouldn't even know them. And God doesn't want you to be interested in those things. Derive your knowledge from God and His Word. If you have a living God who speaks to His children and leads them, what business do you have with meddling in hidden practices like astrology? This is not for the people of God. Like we said in the first video, astrology was the way of the hidden. 
And the Spirit of God is the way of the people of God. Be guided by the Spirit of God. It is a sign of backsliding if we leave the living God and go and hewn for us a cistern that cannot have water. The Spirit of God in us is enough for any guidance in this life. Hallelujah. Let's go to the second scripture that speaks against astrology. Isaiah 47 verse 12 to 13. This also was explained away as if there was no substance in it. It actually said was that the Babylonians who trust in their astrologers and stargazers and sources are going to be judged to see whether it can save them. Is it not calling their bluff? So how can a person who knows this seek to still introduce the people of God into it? God said, judgment is coming for the people of Babylon and the astrologers cannot help them. The other thing that makes this practice even disgusting to God is that all the nations who practice these things mostly tend to worship the signs of heaven. So to say the people of God can be guided by it, but they shouldn't worship it, is not even consistent with the astrology that the hidden practice. The question to ask is, how come the early church never had a slight suggestion or reference to astrology? If it is that important to guide and to tell the future, how come they never practiced it? Actually, when people got born again in Acts 19, 18 to 20, they actually brought their books that helped them in magical art and things like that to bend them. Acts chapter 19, 18 to 20 from the Living Bible, it says, Many of the believers who had been practicing black magic confessed their deeds and brought their incantation books and charms and burned them at a public bonfire. Someone estimated the value of the books at $10,000. This indicates how deeply the whole area was stirred by God's message. When there is revival in the spirit, people forsake other things that is not in line with God. Astrology is foreign to Christianity and the two are not compatible. Let's now go to verses some people asked me to explain in the comment section. They said in Genesis chapter 1 verse 14, God gave the stars as a sign. Genesis 1.14 says, And God said, Let there be light in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days and years. I don't know why this verse is being used to say God has hidden messages for the people of God to guide us in the stars. And we must decode the stars. No. Signs in this verse is out. It means a sign signal that is literally or figuratively banner flag remembrance token proof monument that means the lights in the firmament are set as indicators signs or a banner evidence proof of the season or changing season nothing more nothing less in the absence of proof or evidence then you try to decode but this sign in genesis 1 14 has no hidden message it is actually the evidence of a season or a changing season. Let's read it in different versions. Genesis 1 verse 14 in the Living Bible. It says, Then God said, Let bright light appear in the sky to give light to the earth and to identify the day and the night. They shall bring about the seasons on the earth and mark the days and years. Have you seen it? So when you see it, it's a mark. It's an evidence. It's a proof of a season or a, a a time period in a year. In Genesis 1, 14, let's take it from the Amplifier. It says, and God said, let there be light in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. And let them be signs and tokens of God's provident care and to mark seasons, days, and years. It is the same word that was used for the rainbow as a proof or a sign to know that God will not destroy the earth with water. So when you see the rainbow, must you decode a mystery that is about to happen? No. When you see the rainbow, it tells you, it's an evidence that God will not destroy the earth with water again. Yes. 9 verse 14 of Genesis. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. That's it. Let's move to the last verse they like to mention. The wise men. They say if the wise men could rightly decode the star of Jesus and locate him to worship him, then there's no problem 
if we too try to decode our stars. In response to the wise men's issue, there are four factors that when you look at, you realize that it has nothing to do with astrology as people think. They are number one, there is no astrological allusions in the passage of the wise men. The wise men were never called astrologers, they were simply called magi or magi, which translates as wise men. Not, they were never called astrologers. Number two, the star was not an ordinary or a normal star. Think about it. This is more of a supernatural guidance of a star or a light appearing to them than a planetary alignment as you know in astrology. Why? The star they saw moved. The star appeared, reappeared, and remained stationary. This is not the way stars and planets behave. You know it. Look at Matthew chapter 2 verse 9 to 10. He said, when they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them. So this star is a moving star. This star is a moving light. Till it came and stood over where the young child was. So this, it has remained. This star is a different star. It is like the supernatural announcement of the birth of Jesus by the angels to the shepherds. When they were in the field taking care of their sheep. God chose to lead the wise men by a moving star or a light. It is no near astrology. This is not astrology. Stars and planets don't move like the way the star moved and stopped at the house where the, ch the child was. Thirdly, King Herod didn't view them as astrologers also. When they met King Herod, he rather brought chief priests and scribes. He brought scholars. He didn't bring astrologers because he didn't see them as astrologers. If he knew them as astrologers, he would have brought astrologers for them to decode the matter better. And finally, when the wise men had met Jesus and worshipped and they were living, look at what happened. They didn't consult the horoscope or whatever to know that they are not supposed to go to. Herod. It was God who spoke to them in a dream and redirected them not to go to Herod. Clearly, indicative of the God who led them there, guiding them out. I tell you, in closing, I want to tell you again, Colossians 2, 8-9. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world, rather than from Christ. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in human body. Astrology, no matter the adjectives, is foreign to Christianity. God bless you. I am Apostle Gideon. I believe you are blessed. Let me know what you think in the comment section. I will see you in the next video. Have a blessed time. Bye-bye.